This is a bare set of Blueprint Engine small block Chevy heads that a customer brought into the shop requesting that we check them out, do any necessary machining, and set them up with all new parts. We started with getting the heads cleaned up, at which point we could see that the valve seats appeared to have virtually no wear, so it may be in our best interest to use the ever reliable seat grinding stones on this set of heads. Before doing any work on the valve seats, we decided to measure the valve stems of the new stainless valves we're using, and measure all of the valve guides to check valve stem clearance as well as wear. With our micrometer set to the valve stem diameter, we can transfer that measurement to our split ball bore gauge. While verifying that we have the proper valve stem clearance is one concern, another big concern on used cylinder heads is how much wear the valve guide has in it. Considering the valve seats appear to be in good condition, we would expect to see minimal wear in the valve guides, and on the first head, that definitely was the case. On my initial glance of the second head, I noticed that the exhaust guides had slightly more wear on the chamber side, but were still what we would consider acceptable for a used head. However, I did notice something funny when I had the bore gauge all the way towards the top side of the valve guide. As it turns out, the exhaust guides on this head had significant wear on the top side, likely due to improper valve train geometry causing excessive side loading on the valve during operation. While we were really hoping to be able to save the customer some money and not have to replace the valve guides on these heads, the exhaust guides are worn beyond acceptable limits and must be replaced. Knowing this, I went back and measured the guides in the first head from the top side and found that while there is a bit of wear, they are in much better condition and we determined the wear to be acceptable. So at this point, we decided that we would go ahead and replace the four worn out exhaust guides in the one head and the rest of the guides will just be touch honed with our diamond valve guide home which won't increase the size by more than a tenth or two, but will ensure that there aren't any burrs or tight spots. As you all know, we love making these videos, but they do take a substantial amount of time, and everyone knows that time is money. With that in mind, we've been very fortunate to partner with some amazing companies like Surfshark, who will sponsor our videos. So we do want to give a big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video today. Now, if you're not sure what Surfshark is, Surfshark is a VPN service that keeps your identity safe by encrypting all of the information that's sent between your device and the internet. For instance, let's say you're out buying something for your project vehicle and you need to look up some information, but your cell signal is a little bit weak, so you hook up to the store's public Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, public Wi-Fi networks are often insecure and leave you vulnerable to cyber attacks, but Surfshark creates a secure virtual tunnel, encrypting your data and keeping you safe. While keeping your personal data secure is great, that's not all that Surfshark can do. With over 3,200 servers in over 100 different countries, Surfshark allows you to change your virtual location, allowing you to access geo-blocked content and bypass internet censorship. For example, at the end of a long week, sometimes it's just nice to sit down and stream a movie, and by using Surfshark to change your virtual location, you can access different titles that might not be available in your country. Right now, we've been able to secure a deal for our followers to get 83% off and get three extra months for free when you sign up using our code, Jim's Automotive. There's a link in the description below, and Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's really no risk to trying it out. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, and we're going to keep moving forward on these heads. As you just saw, we removed the guides by tapping the top side for a 3 8 coarse bolt, which we could screw in and then drive against from the bottom side to drive the guides out without any damage to the parent bores of the head. Right here I discovered that we had a problem. I had eyeballed it and assumed these were standard half inch nominal OD guides, but obviously my replacement guides fall right into the bore with no interference. Knowing the bore was slightly over a half inch, I set up our split ball bore gauge to 0.510 inch, and upon measuring the bores, discovered that they were sitting at about 0.5125, which would be pretty close to a 13 millimeter nominal OD guide. Unfortunately, waiting on the new guides is gonna set me back about a week on that head, but for now we'll move forward with grinding the seats on the other head. Starting with the exhaust, we have a tapered valve guide pilot tight in the valve guide, and a grinding stone dressed for a 45 degree valve seat. A quick touch showed that we were concentric, so we'll grind a bit more to clean up the entire original seat face. As a note, grinding seats has always been a foolproof method of getting a well-sealing valve seat. It just isn't as quick as using the surdy to cut all of the angles in one go. However, in an instance like this, it doesn't make much sense to try and cut the seats if you can grind them, because grinding the seats will sink the valve seat much less than cutting it would. Using the stones also does make it a bit more difficult to control the width of your seats, and these seats were already set up fairly thin, with the seat contacting the valve clear to the outside edge. As such, we'll come in with a stone that's dressed to 30 degrees to bring in that top angle until we can just see the full seat on the valve face. 
Being a performance application, we're comfortable with a bit thinner seat and having it pushed all the way to the outer edge of the valve. As we go through and repeat the process on the other three exhaust seats, I wanted to quickly remind you all to drop a comment as my dad and I try to read almost all of them, hit that like button to help the algorithm, and lastly, be sure to subscribe because we have a lot of great content coming up and we want you to be here to enjoy it. The process was very similar on the intake seats, but of course with a larger stone dressed to a 45 degree seat angle, and the intake seats were in even better shape than the exhaust and only required grinding of the 45 degree seat angle to get a nice width and position on the valve face. I can imagine that some of you might be questioning using an old school method for our valve job on these heads, so I wanted to give a quick demonstration of the quality. With the valve seat runout gauge on an intake seat, we're measuring just over a thousandth runout, and when we put the gauge on an exhaust seat, we see maybe a thou and a half. I wouldn't get concerned until we start to get above two thousandths runout, and I can tell you that we have seen brand new heads from big name manufacturers come in well above three or four. If you watch the channel, you also know that we like to do a vacuum check on all of our seats, and these ones passed with flying colors. Next, I went ahead and got the head dialed in on the surfacing mill so that we can make a light skim across the head. The indicator read zero on all four corners, which was great, but before we could start cutting, I changed the cutting insert from the CBN insert that we use on cast iron heads to the PCD insert that we use on aluminum. This fly cutter is about 14 inches in diameter and it runs a single round insert. I knew these heads weren't going to be badly warped, but we still want to get a good surface finish on them for a proper head gasket seal. So I started with a 1000th cut at full table traverse speed. The PCD spits out perfect confetti and after the single pass the surface was clean. I did go ahead and make a half thousandth finish pass with the table slowed down and I was very happy with the end result. So I wanted to get at least one of these heads put together, you know, we're, we're going to have to wait on valve guides on the other head till sometime next week and then I'm gone the rest of the end of the week so going to be a little bit behind but I wanted to at least go through this head and get it finished and check in the spring heights here, we're all right where we thought we were going to be, um, just the spring locator is all we need on these, we don't need any additional shims on this head to get the spring pressure that we were going for and you know the installed height and so on. The one thing I am a little frustrated with that I figured out I don't like how much slop there is with the spring cups that were recommended with these springs. They don't fit the the valve guide very well so they move around a lot. So just gonna call it a day, I guess, and order in some of our, order in a, a, an ID locator for the spring that'll fit the spring and the guide a lot better. And it's the same thickness, so we won't have to worry about any additional shimming there. But I'll order those in and finish up the heads uh, probably sometime next week when they come in. So nonetheless, here's what they'll look like. Nice stainless series valves resurfaced and all new hardware to theoretically match what they would have had when they were new set up just like if they were a set of brand new heads from Blueprint. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out their links in the description. And again, be sure to subscribe for weekly engine machining videos. We'll see you next time.